Hello, my name is Imogen and welcome back to my channel. It's been a very long time. Hello, hello. I know it's been a while since I've done a video, probably uh, over a year. Um, I have become so busy with the toddler and I've been working. And also, I just had another baby. So we just had baby number two, our beautiful second little boy. He is just having a sneeze on the bed. Um, and my big boy is with my mum this afternoon just so I could get some stuff done and so I could film this birth story for you guys. I had a few people ask me if I'm going to do a video on Percy's birth story so I thought I would do it. So I am going to dive right into it. So Percy was due on the 15th of August and on that date I had my 40 week um, appointment so I just went into the midwife I, well, I actually saw um, an obstetrician that day because you have to see a doctor on your last appointment or something like that. And I had my student midwife with me, Amber. She was so lovely. I really, really recommend getting a student midwife. They are brilliant and it's nice to have someone with you the whole time um, and to advocate for you. So I went in for my appointment. Everything was normal as usual. I had a very crazy pregnancy, very normal. The only thing that was not normal is I was um, GBS positive, so group B strep positive again, like I was with Noah. So it just meant I needed to make sure I get my antibiotics in while I was in labor, or I'd have to stay for 24 hours afterwards to be monitored. So I went in, she had a normal chat with me. She asked if I wanted to have my dilation checked. And I was two centimeters dilated already. And, and this was on a Wednesday. And she said, I bet my 30 year career on you having this baby by the end of the weekend. So that was really exciting. I had sort of a, a date, I had a, an end date in sight. So I went home, went to bed, everything was as normal. At about two o'clock in the morning that night, so the 16th, 2 a.m. into the 16th, um, I woke up and I would started to have really, really, what I thought were mild contractions. And so I got up and I sort of walked around the house. I was actually messaging one of my girlfriends, Alyssa, all night she literally stayed up with me from 2 a.m. till 5 a.m. messaging me so I wasn't alone so I had someone to like tell updates to because I didn't want to wake up Derek and I go all the way up there but it was nothing because it really wasn't very painful they were about 10 minutes apart and the more I walked they would get you know a little bit more intense um, but then like I would get in the bath and they stopped so it was really annoying I couldn't go to sleep because they would they would wake me up every time I had one when I was asleep but they weren't really painful enough to be proper contractions yet so <laughs> I was just messaging with my friend, watching YouTube videos, just trying to keep things moving. And it got to 6 a.m., Derek's alarm went off and I said, yeah, it's not happening. Like, we're not having a baby tonight. Although Derek did take the day off for me so I could go get go to bed, have some sleep. He would look after Noah because there was no way I could parent on like the two hours sleep I got. Uh, but I did manage to get some sleep and I slept through until like 10 o'clock and they pretty much stopped. At that point, we just mulled around the house the whole day. I had Noah here, Derek was here, and every now and again I'd get a contraction, but you know, it was nothing really exciting. I managed to go into the office and do pay bills and stuff, and I just realized <laughs> my bra is still unclipped from my last feed. It was a really uh, annoying day because it was like, it was exciting, I could feel these things happening, but they weren't quite labored yet. And I was like, I don't wanna be like this for three days because it wasn't painful enough for it to be painful but they were just so uncomfortable and what turns out since going in and talking to them is basically what they what they said happening was happening was it was Percy basically making his way down pushing on my cervix uh, and and every time he did it would just cause like a Braxton Hicks but it was a bit more painful because he was right down there you can actually see I took a picture and I'll show you um, you can actually see how low down he got during the day um, and he was really far down you can see this massive gap at the top of my stomach and every time I went for a wee, I sat on the toilet, I'd have a, like an actual really bad painful contraction every time I sat on the toilet, which is just from his head being down there, I guess. That was the day of the 16th. It was really annoying and frustrating. Um, I cooked dinner, I put Noah to bed, it was about 7.30, sat and started watching some TV, and about 8.30, I felt like a real contraction. Um, so I got on the ball and I was bouncing, 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 because I remember this from Noah, just bouncing away on the ball, trying to get something happening, pressuring on my cervix to open it up as much as I could, and I was 
counting. I was um, using a contraction timer and I was counting contractions, how long they lasted, the gap in between. And they started off at seven minutes at 8.30 and by 10.30 they were three minutes apart. So I didn't, so, so I was letting Derek know what was happening but I was like, no, we're fine. If I can talk through them, we're fine. We get to three minutes apart contractions and I could still talk through them, but if I like if I had to, but they were I didn't want to. It was like mm, 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 and then I could talk. Derek was like, yeah, you really need to call them and tell them that we're coming in. And I was like, but I don't want to go in. It was 10.30 at night at this point. I didn't want to go in and then be like, you know, have someone come over to look after Noah and then be sent home and then have to send that person home and then bring someone back again. It was just going to be too much of a fuss. But what I did sort of think about is because I was GBS positive, it wouldn't hurt me going in earlier in my labour anyway. They could give me a dose of antibiotics, send me home, and at least I've had like a dose. So I called them up and she was like, oh yeah, I mean, you can come in to get checked if you want. I said, just so you know, my last labor was three and a half hours. It was really fast. So I think um, I'm going to come in now and if it progresses, that'd be really good because they're uh, saying, you know, that my labor, once it starts properly, is going to be fast. She's like, yeah, yeah, come on in. So Derek was playing um, on the computer with his friend and they had like, you know, how they all on Skype together and his mate was still up. It was quarter to 11 at night. The only person we knew that was awake was his friend that he was playing with. So we got him to come around and he just sat at the house or slept in our bed um, just to be here for Noah. And we headed in and I remember looking at the clock in the car. It said 11, 11 um, when we were driving. Driving there, I had a few like contractions. I'd say like moderate. So it'd be like mild, moderate and strong. And I had a few moderate ones. Um, but Derek didn't even really notice because we were having a conversation the whole time. And it just so happened that when I'd get contractions is when he was talking in the conversation and then the contraction would ease and I'd be able to reply to him. And he's like, you seem fine. I said, yeah, I've had a few contractions, nothing too exciting. We arrive at the hospital and I get out the car and I sort of waddle to the front steps and Derek has to go back and get a ticket for the car. And in between me getting out of the car and me and Derek, you know, getting a ticket, going back to the car and coming back to me, I had like three really strong contractions where I was like, where I actually just could not talk through them. So that's when I was like, yep, okay, getting to the hospital worked for me. It happened the same as Noah. The last time we got to the hospital, that's when my like labour really kicked in. So I think something mentally about me being at the hospital may, must make me go, okay, I'm at the hospital, I'm safe, let's have a baby. <laughs> so we get upstairs and from coming out of the elevator doors until the room, like the door of the delivery room, there's a toilet and so Derek and I like we do a quick wee first and then we'll head in and I sat on the toilet and I was just having a wee and then I felt like this massive pop and I actually like jumped off the toilet because it scared me and I was like uh, I think my water's just broke so I you know whatever clean up and then I go outside and I said Derek I think my water's have just broken let's like go now and so we go to delivery they let us in I say hey I was just on the phone like 20 minutes ago um, but I think my waters are just broken they said oh cool we'll come in we'll check them and I sort of like waddle my way to the room and I stood there and just my waters just went all over the floor immediately we saw they were meconium covered so that means that Percy had done a poo already while he was still inside of me which is exactly what Noah did so that was great my boys can't bloody hold it in until they're out uh well Percy did he did a massive poo over me after he was born too which is great thanks joys of having boys hey they saw the meconium in the waters and the really nice midwife was like, okay, we need to get your undies off, get you on the bed, like monitor you. And I couldn't move because every time I tried, like I was just constant contraction. There was no break in between. And then I remember from last time, because of the progression was so fast with my labor, I knew I was going to spew. I started to feel sick. I said, Derek, get me a spew bag. They grabbed one and I just, Ugh. and luckily, like this time, we caught it in a bag last time. I spewed all over myself in the car. I spewed all over myself in the hospital. They had to take all my clothes off because I was just vomit everywhere whereas this time I caught it although we had salmon for dinner the night before so mm. <laughs> I was spewing leaning on Derek I was trying to get my undies off so the midwife just like ranked my undies down I sort of made my way onto the bed I was laying there and I said straight away can I please have the gas because I knew that I couldn't do it without anything um, and the gas is enough that you still feel everything and you still have 
your whole labor going on and you're not you're still in it but it just takes that little bit of an edge off um, which is kind of cruel because you think this gas is going to be like okay i get the gas it's going to help but you still feel everything but what was really good this time is they had it turned right down so i was having barely any gas it was more to help the breathing because you just forget to breathe and i could actually be more present this time i felt with noah i was a little bit off with the fairies whereas this time i could really clearly hear everything that was going on i could be part of a conversation i could really enjoy it and work with my body a lot more than i could with noah <laughs> thing I really appreciated so Derek I remember though <laughs> Derek had um, a glass of like a cup of water with a straw so that I could like keep hydrated and I was just like oh you're like my little water boy my like sexy helper and the midwife was like yep the gas has kicked in <laughs> I was yeah so I was really excited I knew things were gonna be happening really fast um, they didn't they, they sort of hooked me up to check my like to monitor everything that was going on with me and the baby um, they didn't really check for dilation, but I needed that mental like visualization of where I am dilation wise so that I know how far I've got to go. So she sort of checked me and she's like, look, you're about a seven, but you're progressing really fast. And then literally within like minutes, I was like, I need to push, I need to push. I had this big, and she's like, yeah, go for it. It was really funny. Last time with Noah, I had the like the sucky mouthpiece for the gas, whereas this time I had the full gas mask. I would suggest the gassy mouthpiece thing because that mask was a little bit confronting, but also it was just like I just felt um, very like claustrophobic. So I had this thing on my face. I'm trying to like <laughs> breathe as much as I could in, and I'm communicating to Derek through hand signals because I could I did not want to take this thing off because then I couldn't get it back on fast enough. So I was like, you know you know, taking it off to do normal breathing because you don't want to like gash yourself. And I was putting it back on and then when it got really intense, I was hand signaling Derek. So I was like, I need to push, I need to push. And um, he was letting the midwives know what I was trying to tell them. I had my student midwife, Amber, um, like keeping updated just via text. I texted her telling her I was going in. Um, and she said she was working on the NICU that night. So she was just next door and she said, I go on break about two o'clock, hold the baby until two. So at this point we'd, I suppose I should update you with timing wise. So felt my like the most intense contraction about 10.30. We got to the hospital about half a, maybe almost 12 o'clock, about 10 to 12. So it was about, I don't know, quarter past 12 at this point. And my midwife was going on break at two. She said, hold the baby into two. And I was like, there is no way I'm holding this baby. And so I was trying to communicate to Derek like my student midwife Amber wants to really come in for this so they were saying oh what time does she go on break and I was like two 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 and they were like oh okay well maybe we might go send over for her because you're going to start to push soon so they sent over a midwife to get her she went yeah no worries I've just finished putting this nappy on this baby she put the nappy on she came over and I'd already had the baby so that's how quick this um my labor was anyway back to actually in labor time I think someone's starting to wake up just did a massive poo. I don't know if that caught it. That was really loud. Sophie, you're disgusting. Oops, so gross. Anyway, he's happy at the moment, so I'll just leave it. But if you've had a baby or you've pushed for a baby vaginally, you'll know that the pushing feeling is so overwhelming. The only way I can describe it is like, you know when you have to vomit and your stomach muscles just like automatically like tense up when you're vomiting? That's the same feeling, just the other way around. Um, I just felt my stomach going and I was like, I need to push, I need to push. And they were like, yeah, go for it. Yeah, no worries. So I start to like push 
and I'm like, photos, photos, because I really, like, it was really important that we get photos again this time, especially of, like, Derek delivering him, because we didn't get those photos with Noah, because Derek was taking the photos, so obviously when he was delivering him, he couldn't do it at the same time. So Derek, I remember hearing him go, oh, can someone take some pictures or a video or something? She'll kill me if I don't get any. And um, one of the midwives, she's like, yeah, no worries. So she had the camera down business end, and Derek was next to me, and I had two midwives here. And I was just pushing. I'll see how much of the video I can include without getting any bits and pieces in. I don't know if I can crop it so that you can just see faces, or I may just have to do sound. I don't know what I'm going to do, but I'll try and get as much of it in as I can. Okay. Good job. Just keep breathing. Just keep breathing. That's it. Just breathe, breathe. Breathe on that gas. Breathe, breathe. Imogen, breathe on that gas. Little, little, little. Sorry, what was the gestation? 40 plus 2. 40 plus 2, net light more strong to get positive and active zero. Yeah. Cool. Thanks, buddy. Sorry, that's what I meant. Yeah. Just a little push. And again. Close. Oh, close. 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 Yeah, just behind the seat right now. next to you. Yeah. Like, just let baby rest the seat. Okay, you nearly ready to write? Not yet. Oh. Can we need gas, we're not. Oh. Oh. Motherfucker! Mm. Ready? Open your eyes, yeah. darling. Open your eyes. Oh. Look down. Thirty-one. We'll just. Oh, oh, yeah, we have. Well, that's him. Stimulating. Yeah. Happy birthday. Anyway, we just made the man. What are we? Seventeen. Twelve passing the centre, and we'll give that. Job you're the last one. He is. Yeah. I felt it. Let me turn him over. Was really grateful that the gas was turned down to the level it was because. I could actually really work with my body. With Noah, it just sort of happened to me. My body was just doing it. Whereas with Percy, I could really control how much I was pushing and, and rein it back as much as I could. I heard, oh, there's his chin, or chin's out, or something like that, and I was like, oh, and all I could envisage was like my vagina and like a little chin hanging out. It was so <laughs> weird. I didn't know what I was picturing. I was really like, like giving it my all. They take the gas off me, they take all the little like monitoring things off me, they go, Derek, are you ready? And I remember the midwife going, open your eyes, sweetheart, like, look, here's your baby, he's coming. And I just look and I'm like, motherfucker, like, I just, I gave it one really big last push and just, these words came out of my mouth, I was like, ooh, the first words my baby here is motherfucker, but that's fine. Um, and I just give this big push, Derek grabs him and he comes up onto me and, and that, it was amazing. It was as quick as that. The video um, is from when I've like given my first proper push and to when he was born and it's two and a half minutes long. So my pushing was two and a half minutes. So he was born at 12.31 a.m. So what they've established from the beginning of labor to when he was born was an hour and a half of labor which is insane, which is crazy. It did feel longer because obviously I had those like Braxton Hicks and those little pains all through the night before and through the day. Um, but yeah, they say actual labor was an hour and a half, which was amazing. I'm like a labor machine. So that's really exciting. So anyway, he came out, he was on me. And I was like, oh, baby, oh, happy birthday. Oh, like, you know, sort of crying a little bit and Derek's there and he looks so proud and it's like, oh, it's my baby, it's so lovely. <laughs> He's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking more about the GDS positive and I'm good. Yeah. So we'll just do um, August before. Yeah, and we had a good hour of skin to skin. He was fed pretty much straight away. And I remember, I'm like, sorry, Derek, like you can have a go in a minute. Here he is, our little superstar. Or well, not so little superstar, he's a big boy. I'll get to that. So um, he was on me feeding for like an hour and I said to Derek, I'm sorry, like you can have a go. He's like, yeah, I'm just waiting, wondering if I get a turn to hold him yet. 
So Derek strips off and he, you know, well, just his shirt, not naked, that'd be weird. Um, he strips off his shirt and they have some skid skin while I get to go have a shower. Um, I didn't have any tears this time. I had a couple of grazes, but I managed to avoid stitching, which is great because I had three stitches with, or three areas that needed stitching with Noah. Um, and that was awful recovery. So this time I was like, woo, that's stitches. Um, yep, so we had a shower and when I came out, they were weighing him and I walked past and it said 4.1 on the scales. And just to give you guys some sort of like scale on what my babies are, Noah was 3.2 kilos and Percy was 4.1, a whole kilo bigger than his brother. Holy crap, I was like, that came out of me? Nine pound one ounce is what that converts to, which is absolutely unbelievable. Um, a big chunky, sorry, you're hungry, I know. He is always hungry, always hungry. I wanted a chubby one. Noah was um, my little petite baby and Percy's my chubby. So yeah, he was here and he was happy and he was feeding a lot. I had to stay in hospital for two and a half days because of the meconium and the group strep, but they pretty much just left me to it in the hospital. Uh, they didn't really, because I'm a second time mum, I was demand feeding. I knew what I was doing, they were fine. They sort of just left me to it, which was nice. And also a bit like, uh, is anyone gonna come see me? <laughs> My brother was over from the UK at the time, so that was really special to have him keep me company before Percy was born and then sort of come, be able to come up to the hospital and meet him, uh, which is which is so beautiful. Uh, they kept me company a lot, my mum and my brother. They bought me lots of treats, which was nice. Percy didn't have a name for a few hours because we were sort of between two. I liked one, Derek liked one. We didn't hate each other, so we were both very, you know, happy either way, so we couldn't actually decide. So my name that I loved was Percy, and Derek really liked Atlas. And I loved both of them. I didn't want to give either of them up. And I said to Derek, if he is like Noah, you know, a small baby, uh, a small baby, we'll call him Atlas, and it'll be Atlas Fox. And if he's a chubby baby, I just see Percy, Percy Phoenix, as like a chubby little boy. Anyway, he came out and he was chubby, and I was like, I'm sorry, he's Percy to me. Like that's just the name I feel he is. And Derek was a little bit like, mm, I still like Atlas. I still really like Atlas. We asked the opinion of the midwives. They all said Percy. Uh, that was just, I don't know, it just sort of seemed to stick. So he could have been Atlas, but <laughs> I did say to Derek, if you really love the name Atlas, we'll call him that. And he sort of didn't say yay or nay. So I was like, okay, it's Percy. Considering he came up with Noah and named Noah, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it was my turn to name a baby. He's so beautiful. I love you. He's just started to smile, you guys. And it just kills me. He does these big, like, massive open mouth smile. His eyes go closed. He's like, and he just looks so happy. There's a bunch of kids that have just come in the pool next door. Oh, I hope this doesn't affect the noise in the background. Can I just introduce you? Take you off the booby for one second. So, <laughs> sorry. This is Percy Phoenix. This is our beautiful Percy Phoenix. A beautiful little boy. Mm, you're the best little brother. Noah um, wasn't too impressed in the beginning. He sort of um, ignored the baby. He wouldn't come and sit next to me on the bed, which really offended me and actually broke my heart. He wouldn't hold Percy. We managed to get him on the second day to sit next to me for like two minutes for a photo. When we first came home, he sort of ignored him for a bit, but he's slowly warming up. Most of the time, he's really lovely to him, and he'll hold his hand, he'll lay on the floor with him if he's like crying, and hold his hand, and oh, it's okay, Percy. And then other times, he like rides his tricycle over the top of him, or, you know, slaps him on the head or something like that. But he's really good. If Percy's crying, he'll go, Percy hungry, mummy, he wants booby. Percy loves booby. <laughs> um, I am pumping but I am like exclusively breastfeeding him, um, but I'm pumping as well for Noah. So Noah has my breast milk in a bottle and Percy has it straight from the tap. Oh, I feel like I rushed talking through that because my neighbors were outside the whole time and they could hear me and I thought they were judging me. Anyway, I hope that wasn't too rushed and crazy. And I hope you enjoyed hearing about my beautiful little boy.
Mm. He's very pink and very chubby. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. We've got matching chins, Percy. Our chins are actually the same. Oh my god, you look the same, babe. Bye! <laughs>